Okay, hi, Programming 11. Oh, look, I'm live this time. And maybe I'm recording for you, whoever you are watching this video. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at how do we put animated GIFs into processing. It's surprisingly hard. We're going to do like, it's going to take three big steps. The first step is just getting the animated GIF. And the hard thing is that you can't just use the image function to show an animated GIF. You have to break it into its separate frames. So like this animated GIF of this like endless circle here, uh, it's actually many pictures that are kind of being shown at us at a particular frame rate uh, to create the illusion of animation. And it's of course, its end point is the same of its as beginning point, so it looks like it's looping endlessly, uh, which is kind of just a trick of the uh, eye, an optical illusion, if you will. Um, so this is the one I'm gonna take. You can take any one that you want. Uh, I know from previous lessons, though, that this step can be hard, especially if you're using your own computer and some of the settings are, like, set to, like, particularly strong security settings. I think Max in particular might struggle with this. So I'll try to make sure that uh, I upload this particular file that I get so that you can download it from Teams. And I'll even break it into the separate frames if you can't download zip files. Some people's, I noticed it was mostly Max last week, but, like, it could be any computer like you're just the security settings are set so high you can't even open a zip file so that could be a problem <laughs> to make this happen uh, the first step here of getting these frames is not really programming related it's just sort of like computer operation stuff and if you've mostly used like phones or tablets you've never had to see files or folders so it could actually be pretty frustrating and, and complicated so um, so hey but that's good learning right it's a good chance to see you know how <laughs> a computer uh, works a bit deeper down than what the sort of the phone or a tablet kind of shows you so anyways without further ado I'm gonna grab this uh, gif and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it in a new window and sometimes you get lucky and you just get the gif plain old GIF and you're ready to go. So I'm going to right click. This is in Chrome, by the way, but any browser should have a similar option. It might be named differently. Uh, but I'm going to open up in uh, this way. Open image in new tab. You probably have something similar in Safari or in um, for Firefox or whatever browser you're using. So I'm going to do that. And then sometimes it just gives you the GIF, which I got. That's great. But sometimes it gives you sort of like a website like this. So I was able to just get straight to the GIF. And I know I was successful because I can see that the .gif, like in the URL, it ends in .gif. So that's just the image. But for you, you might have gotten it open in like some kind of website like Giphy or Giffer or like some website with the word GIF in it. Um, if that's the case, then you can try to find the copy GIF link button. Almost all of these have like some kind of copy GIF link button. If you've ever like, you know, wanted to like post a gif in like discord or something i guess you just search natively in discord but if you couldn't if you wanted one in particular like this is what you would do you'd copy this you know link and then that's going to be sort of the way you do it so either way you just get the link to the gif it should start with like http and then end in gif uh so that's um that's good so i just gotta select the whole thing or if i was in this website here i'm gonna click and just copy the whole link so that's step sort of A, <laughs> step 1A. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of steps. So the next one is we actually want to take this GIF and break it down into its separate frames. So it's a whole bunch of different images. So the way we do that is we can go to a site or a piece of software that will do that for us. And I found great success with the website called EZGIF. It's EZGIF.com. So I'll go there, EZGIF.com. And there's a whole bunch of tools it has. Here it is, easygif.com. Get it? Because it makes it easy. So clever. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of stuff, actually. It's kind of interesting. If you ever wanted to make your own GIF from, like, a video or something, I think, it, I think that'd be pretty fun. You know, resizing a GIF is kind of hard, so it helps you with these things. All sorts of stuff. But what we want is the split thing here. It looks like it's got some film uh, reels uh, going on here. So look for split. And once you click split, then it gives you a place where you could copy the uh, image URL right here. Alternatively, if you have a GIF, like a file, like maybe you're on Discord and you're like, oh, I had a great GIF I posted yesterday. I loved it so much. You could download it from Discord and then upload it by choosing a file if you wanted to do it that way. So, whoa, I did something that I didn't mean to. <laughs> Let's try again. 
So I'll paste. I'm using Control C and Control V, by the way, to cut and paste, or copy and paste, I should say. Um, so there's the link. So then I'm going to click Upload, and it will prove that it worked because it will show the GIF here. So that's great. If you don't see your GIF, if it has an error message, it's quite possible that that GIF doesn't work with Easy GIF. They mostly do. Like, I haven't seen many that don't, but this will be a place where sometimes students will be like, stuck like they'll just they can't upload it so again make sure that the link that you pasted ha ends in dot gif or you know it's not it's not going to work for sure so this is working for me so hopefully no one got stuck yet if you did that's okay i'll be coming around to help you out in a bit uh once we got that step then we can go scroll down and there's a split to frames button so you can click that and watch it split it into separate frames and we can see all those frames uh, get split out there. And I suppose at this point you could right click and download each picture. That would be one way to get it. And that would be a reliable way to get it if you can't download zip files. So if you're stuck with a security setting on your computer, you can't seem to change. Uh, you can't open a particular kind of file. I guess, you know, pick a GIF that doesn't have too many frames and you can manually download them here. But for most of you, you're not going to want to do that. I see, like, Darian's over there. Like, he's got a huge GIF with, like, lots of frames. Like, it looks really, like, cool and, like, <laughs> awesome looking. So, like, you know, you wouldn't want to, like, manually download. Maybe you're in the same boat. So what you can do instead is download it as a zip file. A zip file is a kind of file that takes many, many files and combines it into one single file. And it also compresses it so that the sum of the, the uh, space that all those files takes up is less than the zip file itself, sometimes dramatically. So it's designed to like make it easy to download things or upload things, but you have to extract those images once you download the zip file because processing can't read them when they're zipped, so to speak. Uh, so we'll um, we'll do that now, but this can be a tricky thing. So I'm going to download the uh, download frames as zip. It's the red button at the bottom, and I'm just going to save it to my desktop for now. Or if you have a better place you'd like to save it, please feel free uh, to save it in a different place. Um, so I'm just going to save on my desktop. I'm going to click Save. And it looks like it is downloading. So that's great. So now we've got sort of step 1B done. We've split into the frames, and we've downloaded the zip file. So now step 1C is going to get to extract those frames and put it into our sketch folder. So let's go make a sketch right now. We'll just start a new sketch. Uh, I'm going to go just in, I already have a new sketch actually ready to go. And you'll want to save this as a separate sketch so that you don't mess up your existing project. Uh, and then you have this as an example for future projects. It's really clear about what's the GIF stuff compared to what's the breakout stuff. Also, I guess that will, I'll just mention it will make it harder possibly because you'll have to figure out where all these parts of the code go in your breakout project. But I would say that, you know, we'll talk about that really clearly as we go. So we'll make sure we end this lesson with like clear instructions of where these different parts will end up in your breakout project or other future projects, whatever uh, project you want to add a GIF to. So I'm going to go ahead and just add in really quickly void setup and void show. And then I'm going to save this project, and I'll just call it like GIF example. And I think this will work out fine. Let's go to file, save as, uh, wherever you normally save your projects. I'm going to just, I'm going to, don't be like me. If you're on a school computer, saving to the desktop is bad. If you're on your own computer, though, you can save wherever. And I guess I'm on my own computer, so I'll save it as GIF example. In case you want to see what I'm doing here. <laughs> GIF example. It's not that exciting. You can call it whatever you want, really. I'll save it. And the reason I'm saving it is because I want to have a sketch folder. I want to have a place where I can put those uh, unzipped frames that make up my GIF. So the fastest way to get to your sketch folder is once you're in your sketch, you just press Control, or if you're on a Mac, Command K. K is in Kangaroo. So if you press K, Control K, I should say, you'll see, like, it'll open up your folder. You'll see your whatever .pde file. And right now, I'll just make a uh, new folder. I'll make the data folder. So I'll go new folder and I'll call that data. And so now that's where I'm going to want to put the, the files that are in that zip file, the, the different images, the frames of my, my GIF. I want to get them into the data folder of my sketch. 
So this will be something you'll want to do also for your breakout project. Eventually you'll want to transfer them out of this one and get them into your breakout, but it's a good practice step to just do it right now. So I'm going to keep this window open. I'm just going to slide over to the side and I'm going to go find my, <laughs> got too many things open, yada yada. I'm going to find that zip file right here. I'll zoom in. Nice. This is, this is my new D&D &D character uh, picture here. Uh, she's an angry gnome, uh, and don't mess with her. So good times. But here we got. Uh, no, that's not it. Where is it? Maybe I didn't have to show you my my D and D character. Uh, oh, it's one of these. I don't know now. What which one? I got too many. I've I've done this example like multiple times. Well, either way, it's got a zip in it, so I'll just open it up. So what you do is you just double click on it, and if it's a Mac, it might plunk out a folder right away. Like it might just like blonk, it makes like a little sound, and like poof, a folder will come out. So that's great. That means it's extracted. If you see, a, if you double click on a zip file and out comes a folder, cool. You can open the folder and then drag the files from the from that folder into your data folder on your sketch. If you're on a PC, what will probably happen is it'll open it up and it'll look kind of like just like Windows Explorer. For me, it opens up in a separate program, but I don't think on the computers here that does happen. But either way, you'll get a folder open and you'll want to drag all the files that are here. You want to take them and drag them over to your data folder. So whatever sort of computer you have and whatever setup you have, like that's the ultimate goal is to have two windows. In one, you see the images and the other one, you see your sketch folder and you want to just select and drag and drop from one to the other. And then in the end, you should get a sketch uh, folder that includes the data folder that has all your separate images all ready to go in there. That's sort of the end result. So how you get there might be different for each person. Uh, but hopefully those will, those will work out pretty smoothly. Hey, so that's step one. That's like ABC uh, of step one <laughs> a lot, right? Like especially if you're not used to files and that kind of thing. Like this, something may have gone wrong for you. So uh, maybe at home as well. So, uh, again, the, the major problems are you might not be able to download a zip file, uh, in which case I'll have one available for you. You might not be able to open your zip file, in which case uh, on Teams I'll have like the separate images ready for you to download straight from Teams. Uh, and I guess the other thing that could go wrong is like you just don't unzip it. Like you just, you just put the zip file or something into data. You didn't get all these pictures right in there so you know there's probably a million possible ways for that to go wrong so whatever your situation is definitely uh ask me either if you're at home on teams or come in on flex time or or you folks right here you can ask me <laughs> right now so thanks for everyone at home watching this video i'm gonna stop bye